100 My Digital Life Sense and Sense Ability. In the next exercise, we'll first see how a loop can be used to enable the user to enter list items. Then we'll extend the program so that it accesses the data entered by the user. Open a new project and immediately save this project in the Session 6 subfolder as SPG Project 36 SOL. This exercise requires you to have your computer's sound turned on. We're going to create a program that allows the user to create a tune. Uh, the user will be asked to enter numbers, each of which will correspond to one of Sense's instrument sounds. Once the numbers have all been entered, the tune consisting of a sequence of notes from these instruments will be played. First, we'll investigate two blocks from the sound palette. Drag a set instrument block into the scripting pane and then drag in a play note block, snapping them together like this. Try to work out what these blocks do by using the help facility and by running your two block stack with different input values. What input values can the set instruments block take? Now we'll create the initial part of the program script. We'll do this in a clear part of the scripting pane with blocks from step one remaining in the scripting pane too. We'll use them shortly. Create a list variable, instrument list, and a variable, instrument number, ensuring that their watches are displayed. Drag in a green flag block and then create the script shown here. The user should be asked five times via dialog boxes to enter a number from 1 to 128. Each time the number entered by the user should be held in the instrument number and then added to the instrument list. What initialization do we need at the beginning of the program? Add a block directly under the green flag block to achieve this. Run the program and check by inspecting the instrument list watcher on the stage that it does what's required so far. And for simplicity, we'll assume that the user enters valid numbers. Now we'll create the part of the program that accesses each of the numbers in the list, instrument list, in turn, using each of them to play a note from the instrument corresponding to that number. Drag a repeat block into the clear space in the scripting pane and place the two blocks from step one between its jaws, like this. Create a variable, not a list variable, called position, which the program will use to loop through the list. Directly above the new repeat block, we'll place a block to initialize the value of position. Amend the repeat block and the blocks between its jaws so that looping is carried out as many times as there are items in the instrument list. You should not hard code the current length of the list into the program and in each loop the instrument played is the one corresponding to the item at the current value of position in instrument list and to do this we'll need to use another block as input to the set instrument to block and at a suitable point in each loop the value of position is incremented by one join the stack that's just been created onto the end of the script that we created earlier and then save the project and run the program, checking that it's working as required.
So in this solution, you can see that the set instrument to block sets the current instrument to the one corresponding to the number in the input box. There are 128 instruments corresponding to the numbers 1 to 128. Other numbers can be accepted as input, but any number below 1 is treated as 1, and any number above 128 is treated as 128. The program at this point should look like this. The block delete all of instruments list is required at the beginning of the program to remove any existing items in the instrument list. And here's an alternative approach that would initialize position to zero and then each loop increment its value before accessing the corresponding list position. The completed program for this exercise can be found as project 36 completed. In the next video, we'll look at how we could go about allowing the user to enter a list of any number of items. Mm -hmm.